Let's turn to Facebook because I like what you said recently that harvesting users' personal data is no longer abnormal. Right. And that might not be bad. So what's our new normal here? Well, it's user choice, right? First of all, you have a choice to participate. You don't have to be on Facebook. But, you know, that said, you create data, gigabits of data every day. When you walk down the street with your phone on, you're creating data. When you connect to Wi-Fi somewhere, you're creating data. When you make a call, text, send an email, do a search, you're creating data. And so if you're concerned about data, then you really need to educate yourself to make sure that, that you understand exactly what data you're creating and who can use it. So we basically signed off our souls to the devil a long time ago. Yeah, I wouldn't know that it's to the devil, but because um, on the other hand, it simplifies your life. You know, there, the choices you, the, the data you create that is being reused, some people think misused, but it, it can be used for better as well. You know, it can simplify your, your choices on Amazon. It can simplify, you know, improve your searches. There, there's a lot of ways that I think is beneficial, but I try to make a point to understand how and where my data is being used. Another hot topic these days is Amazon uh -huh. and President Trump's personal tirade really against Bezos here. Uh, you know, what do you make of this? <laughs> I'll take Jeff Bezos every time. You know, I, I think, you know, Donald Trump is, gets on these tangents about companies and that's all it is. It's a little tweet storm and it's, it, it's worth the, the bandwidth. But, you know, but is it the president's job to personally, you know, go after certain founders or CEOs? Well, if you would have asked me prior to November of 2016, I'd probably say no. Um, but the president makes his own choices, and, and I don't necessarily agree with this one or, or a lot of them, but you know, we, we've gotten to the point where we have a ready, fire, aim presidency now. That's the way they run the administration, and that creates a lot of agita and, and upset stomachs but yeah. with a lot of people. And, there also seems to be a dance forming when we're looking at tariff wars here. You know, uh, they're on, they're off. Uh, you know, Kudlow coming out saying, well, you know, Trump is really a free trader at heart. Do you believe that? You know, um, I'll tell you exactly what this reminds me of. In, in any company that sells, which is every company, there's always, are, there are, are always going to be salespeople who always oversell. And then somebody's got to go in and clean it up and say, no, you know, that gold may not be worth $17,000 an ounce in three days. You know, you've got, let, let's qualify things and let's do things a little, let, let me explain exactly what's going on. So Trump's the guy saying gold's going to be worth $17,000 and that, you know, it's going to be the better currency if things go wrong. See how I keep on trying yeah, to nail you. I see that. I see that. I love how you keep bringing it back, driving that knife. <laughs> But you get my point, right? He's a salesman. You know, that's the way he sold units in his building. He, he sold condos by saying, you know, you, it has this, it has that, and it didn't. Yeah. And then somebody else had to come along and say, well, before you write your check, you need to know A, B, and C. And, and that's, that's the way he op operates as, as president. He's a salesman, and, you know, but he doesn't have to do the job. He doesn't have to do the work. And fortunately, whether it's Larry Kudlow or somebody else, we've had people, at least to this point, who recognize the difference between him overselling and what we have to deliver. So when he talks about trade, um, obviously it, it upsets a lot of people, particularly people in those industries, but his history since he's taken over is that what he says and what actually is implemented have never been the same thing. Not once, not even a half a time. So I think, again, because, because of who he is and the, the title, I think we have to talk about it, but I'll, I won't be concerned about the, the language and the hyperbole until it actually happens. Turning to U.S. earnings out next week, Kevin O'Leary said, hey, we could really expect some fireworks. You feel the same? Um, I think earnings will be good. Um, you know, I think Amazon will have a lot to prove, and, and hopefully they'll come through, and, and the fangs. And yeah. in the interest of disclosure, Amazon's my biggest holding, and Netflix is my second biggest holding. And because I think Amazon is still the world's best startup, they, they invest in new things and push things in great directions. So with that said, yeah, I think earnings are going to be good. Gosh, and how much trouble is Tesla going to be in? You know, that's a good question. Um, I just bought a Tesla, actually, so I like the car. Congratulations. Yeah. Um, Was see. it a gold interior? Mm. I painted it gold. I painted it gold. I have to go there. Because somebody has to actually use the metal. Because right. if no one uses right. it, there's right. really no value, right? right? right. <laughs> so 
Um, I don't know. Um, I don't know what their cash position is. So Elon said that they won't have to yeah. go out and raise money, and if they can, if, if they can or, or organically fund their operations, they'll be great. They'll be a great company.